Well hello and welcome to the first in a series of short videos looking at some of the key figures uh, in Scotland's Reformation. We're not going to be doing it in depth, we're just going to be having an overview of, of who they were and um, what they achieved. So we're going to begin with Scotland's first Reformation martyr, a man called Patrick Hamilton. But before we do, let's just have a look at the, the church in Scotland before the Reformation. Why did the church need reformed? Well, the church in Scotland prior to the 1500s was Roman Catholic. There was um, very little access to the Word of God. All worship services were in Latin. There was confusion about the person and work of, of Jesus Christ. Real issues regarding the, the way of salvation and a real godless lifestyle uh, in those who are in leadership in the church in Scotland at that time. But this wasn't just a, an, an issue for Scotland. This was the same all over Europe. But God took action. God raised up men to reform his church. Men like Wycliffe, Tyndale, uh, Luther, Calvin, others uh, in Europe. Uh, in Scotland, we had men like George Wishart, John Knox. But before them, uh, we'll start with uh, Scotland's first Reformation martyr, the foundation layer of the Reformation in Scotland, Patrick Hamilton. What do we know about Patrick Hamilton? Well, he was born in 1503 into a, a rich noble family. His mother was a distant cousin of King James. At the age of 13, to give you an idea of the corruption of the time, he was given an abbey. He was made the abbot of Fern, and the family used the revenue from that that he got at 13 to send him to the continent to mainland Europe to study at the universities over there. He went to Paris first of all and then made his way to, to the University at Louvain. Whilst he was there, Martin Luther's teachings were sweeping through the places of, of learning on, on the continent and he was heavily influenced by Luther's teachings. He was convinced that what Luther was saying and teaching was from the Bible and he was converted. In 1524, he comes back to Scotland and gets a job as a professor at the university in St Andrews. But the things he's saying, the teaching that he's doing, uh, draws the attention of the Roman Catholic Church. And Patrick Hamilton is not ready to face the, the church yet. So he leaves and goes back over to, to Germany, where he meets some of the, the leading reformers there. He meets uh, William Tyndale there. Whilst he's there, he also writes a short thesis called Patrick's Places. In Patrick's Places, the, the main point of Patrick's Places is that you are saved only through faith in Jesus Christ and, and not by any good works. But in 1527, he felt a real call to come back to Scotland again. So he comes back and he settles near Linlithgow. He begins to take the gospel to, to his family. His brother and sister are converted, as are others. He's married and he settles down. But Archbishop Beaton, a short time later, he finds out that Patrick Hamilton is back. So early 1528, he invites him to the university at St Andrews to come and just talk about these, these teachings that he's doing of Luther and to come and discuss them at the universities there. So he does that. He goes to St Andrews. And for a short period, but over a month, he is given freedom to preach. He's preaching openly the gospel of Jesus Christ. The reason they're doing that is they're simply uh, gathering evidence so that they can use this in a trial later on. But God uses that time. That time of him preaching is, is, is fruitful and some key important people are, are actually converted at that time. But sadly on the 29th of February 1528 he's arrested, put on trial for heresy and refusing to, to, to re deny his beliefs, he's found guilty. And that very same day, he is sentenced to be executed. So, at noon, on the 29th of February, 1528, he's taken from the castle. There's a small procession through the streets of St Andrews to the outside of St Salvatore's, where the stake has been put in the ground. When he gets there, he takes off his cap and his gown and his coat and he gives them to his servant, saying... These will be of little use to me in this fire, but they'll be of use to you. He then turns around and says that he has nothing more to leave him 
but the example of his death, which I pray thee keep in mind, for albeit the same be bitter and painful in man's judgment, yet it is the entrance to everlasting life, which none can inherit who deny Christ before this wicked generation. His death was slow, the wood was wet, it was cold, with the wind and the rain had, had caused the wood to be waterlogged. So, it didn't light. They got some gunpowder, it didn't work. And it actually took six hours before the flames took hold and um, Patrick Hamilton was martyred. His last words were, How long, O Lord, will darkness overwhelm this realm? How long will thou suffer this tyranny of men? Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Sad as Patrick Hamilton's death was, it was a turning point. The, his courage, his bravery, his, his brilliance and his, his gentleness was such a, an encouragement to so many in Scotland. And as the news spread out, people really began to, to, to ask, why, why did this happen to Patrick Hamilton? He was 24 years of age, you know. So the... His death really was the spark that ignited Reformation in Scotland and instead of the, the gospel dying, it actually spread. So that was Patrick Hamilton, Scotland's first Reformation martyr, 24 years of age, 29th of February 1528. I hope this has been of, of benefit to you and please look for other videos that will be coming shortly and thank you for watching.